namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya tada sauvadya tam papa atatayatma banduha bhartushya vipriyam vira kritavan kul pansanaha this man is an assassin and murderer of your own family members not only that but he has also dissatisfied his master he is but the burnt remnants of his family kill him immediately evam parikshita dharmam pathaki krishnena choditah nechathantum guru sutam yadyapyatma ham namahan sutta goswami said Although Krishna, who is examining Arjun in religion, encouraged Arjuna to kill the son of Dronacharya, uh, Arjuna, a great soul, did not like the idea of killing him. Although Aswadama was a heinous murderer of Arjun's family members. Atmo pentya swashibiram Govinda priya sathihi nevedyatam priya yeh. After reaching his own camp, Arjun, along with his dear friends and charioteer Sri Krishna, entrusted the murderer unto his dear wife, who was lamenting for her murdered sons. Tatna hitam pa shuvat pa shabatham avang mukham karma jugupsiten. Nirikshya Krishna Prakritim Guru Sutam Vamsva Bhava Kripaya Na Namacha. Sri Sutta Goswami said, Draupadi then saw Atadama, who was bound with ropes like an animal and silent for having enacted the most inglorious murder. Due to her female nature, due to her being naturally good and well behaved, she showed him due respect as a brahmana vacha cha sahanyasya bandhana nayanam sat sati muchata muchata mesha brahmano niratam guru she could not tolerate ashwadhamas being bound by ropes and being a devoted lady she said release him for he is a brahmana our spiritual master sar hanjo dhanur vedah savi sagop sayamah astra gramasya bhavata shikshito yat anugahat it was by donacharya's mercy that you learned the military art of throwing arrows and the confidential art of controlling weapons sarashu भगवान रुन प्रजारूपेण वर्तते तस्य मनोरिधम पत्न्यास्ते नानवगा द्वीरसुकपी हि द्रोणाचार्य इज सर्टेनली स्टिल एक्झिस्टिंग बीइंग रिप्रेझेंटेड बाय हिज सन हिज वाइफ कृपी डिड नॉट अंडरगो अ सती विथ हिम बिकॉज़ शी हैड अ सन तद्धर्मज्ञ महाभाग भवद्भिर्गौरव कुलम वृजिन नाहति प्राप्त पूज्यम वंदम अभिक्षणशः ओ मोस्ट फॉर्च्युनेट वन हु नोस द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ रिलीजन इट इज नॉट गुड फॉर यू टू कॉज ग्रीफ टू ग्लोरियस फैमिली मेंबर्स हु आर ऑलवेज रिस्पेक्टेबल एंड वर्शिपफुल द्रोणाचार्य क्राय लाइक मे आय एम अग्री फॉर द डेथ ऑफ माय सन्स शी नीड नॉट क्राय कॉन्स्टंटली लाइक मे यैकोपितं 
If the kingly administrative order being unrestricted in sense control offends the Brahmana order and enrages them, then the fire of that rage burns up the whole body of the royal family and brings grief upon all. Suta Uvacha Dhamyam Nyayam Sakarunam Nirvyalikam Samam Mahat Raja Dharma Suto Ragyaha Pratyananda Dvicho Vijaha Sutta, Sutta Goswami said, O Brahmanas, King Yudhishthir fully supported the statement of the Queen, which were in accordance with the principles of religion and were justified, glorious, full of mercy and equity, and without duplicity. Nakulaha Sahadeva Sha Yuyudano Dananjayaha Bhagavan Deva Ki Putro Nakula and Sadev, the younger brothers of the king, and also Satyaki, Arjuna, the personality of God, Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, son of Devki, and the ladies and others all unanimously agreed with the king. That's <laughs> Bhima, however, disagreed with them and recommended killing this culprit who, in an angry mood, had murdered sleeping children for no purpose and for neither his nor his master's interest. Vishamya Bhima Gaditam Dropadhyascha Chaturbhujaha Alokya Vadanam Sakhu Idam Maha Hasan Iva Chaturbhuja, the four armed one, or the personality of Godhead, after hearing the words of Bhim, Draupadi, and others, saw the face of his dear friend Arjun, and he began to speak as if smiling. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Brahma Bandhu Nahantavya Atatai Vadahanaha Maipo Bhayam Amnatham Paripaya Nushashanam Guru Pratishutam Satyam Yatatantavya Yatapriyam Priyam Chabhima Senasya Panchalya Mahi Bevacha the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna said, a friend of a Brahmana is not to be killed, but if he is an aggressor, he must be killed. All these ru rulings are in the scriptures and you should act accordingly. You have to fulfill your promise to your wife and you must also act to the satisfaction of uh, Bhimsena and me. Sutta Vacha Arjuna Sehesagyaya just then, Arjuna could understand the motive of the Lord by his equivocal orders, and thus with his sword, he severed both hair, both hair and jewel from the head of Ashwadhamma. He, Ashwadhamma, had already lost his bodily luster due to uh, infanticide. And now, moreover, having lost the jewel from his head, he, lo he lost even more strength. Thus, he was unbound and driven out of the camp. Vapanam dravinadanam sthana neyapanam tatha eshahi brahma badunam vadonanyo stidehi kaha Cutting the hair from his head, depriving him of his wealth and driving him from his residence are the prescribed punishments 
for the relative of a Brahmana. There is no injunction for killing the body. Thereafter, the sons of Pandu and Draupadi, overwhelmed with grief, perform the proper rituals for the dead bodies of their relatives. Thus end the, pur the Bhakti Vedanta purport of the first canto, seventh chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, A Son of Drona Punished. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, thank you. Thank you so much, Adi Devi Mataji Sailesh Prabhu, for that lovely recitation. So, of course, we're continuing with chapter seven of the first canto. Today we'll be looking at text 43. So we'll just do the Mangala Charan and then we will start the class. Hare Krishna. Om Jnanati Mirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Miritam Yena Tasme Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Nihari Priya Vancha Kalpa Turubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhatta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, Hare Krishna. So I'll just share my screen. Um, I don't have a PowerPoint this time, but I'll just share the screen on the database. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So text 43 Sanskrit Uvacha chasa hantyasya bhandana nayanam sati muchyatam muchyatam esha brahmano nitaram guruhu Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. The translation, she, so we're talking about uh, Draupadi here, but she could not tolerate Ashwatthamas being bound by ropes. And being a devoted lady, she said, release him, release him, for he is a Brahmana, our spiritual master. Purple. So as soon as Ashwatthama was brought before Draupadi, she thought it intolerable that a Brahmana should be arrested like a culprit and brought before her in that condition, especially when the Brahmana happened to be a teacher's son. <clears throat> Arjuna arrested Ashwatthama, knowing perfectly well that he was the son of Dronacharya. Krishna also knew him to be so, but both of them condemned the murderer without consideration of his being the son of a Brahmana. 
According to revealed scriptures, a teacher or spiritual master is liable to be rejected if he proves himself unworthy of the position of a guru or spiritual master. A guru is called also an acharya, or a person who has personally assimilated all the essence of the shastras and has helped his disciples to adopt the ways. Ashwatthama failed to discharge the duties of a brahmana or teacher, and therefore he was liable to be rejected from the exalted position of a brahmana. On this consideration, both Lord Sri Krishna and Arjun were right in condemning, condemning Ashwatthama. Okay, so, just discuss this part so far, and then we'll continue with the purple. Um, okay, so we can see more of the the glories of Draupadi Maharani that she's she's um, now face to face, you know, with the killer of her of her five children. Um, you know, he's right there in front of her. You know, he's bound by ropes. He's he's you know, basically their prisoner. Um, so now they're free to to punish him um, for what he's done. Um, but even though that is, you know, within their power um, to to punish him severely, um, she doesn't want to do that. Even though, you know, it, it, it's saying that, um, where was it? Lord Sri Krishna and Arjuna were right in condemning Ashwatthama. So they would be um, within their full rights to, to punish him in that way. Um, but still, you know, such compassion is there. I mean, <clears throat> just imagine if one of us, you know, we had five children and obviously, you know, um, if, if the murderer has been caught, I'm sure, you know, I mean, I don't know, but I, I'm guessing it would be quite difficult for us to then um, act in this in such a compassionate way that that Draupadi is acting. You know, we want to, we want just, we would want justice for our children and, you know, um, but obviously this is, this is a Draupadi who's a pure devotee, so not something uh, we can imitate, but we can glorify her, her great compassion here. And <clears throat> so, yeah, this point here um, that, you know, if you, you have a teacher, a spiritual master, and gener generally we understand, you know, once you've taken it's it's a lifelong commitment you know once you've taken a spiritual master you, you it's a lifelong um relationship spiritual relationship that you've initiated um and it's not it's never to be rejected it says in the scriptures you know but then also there is this um there's this provision that um, they can actually be rejected but only um as it says here, if they prove themselves unworthy of the position of a guru or a spiritual master. So I'm sure um, most of us, if not all of us, can think of uh, one obvious example of this is um, Shukracharya and how he was rejected by Bali Maharaj. Um, <clears throat> he was ultimately, you know, the Brahmana is meant to teach the spiritual knowledge I'm sorry, the spiritual master is meant to teach the spiritual knowledge to their disciple. And ultimately, the spiritual master is there to help us uh, go back to Godhead and also help us um, by engaging us in the service of the Lord. So here the Lord himself has appeared as Vamana Dev uh, before Bali Maharaj. And his spiritual master, instead of telling him, you know, that, you know, this is God, he's right in front of you, so obviously you should surrender to him. No, he says, you know, don't trust him, he's going to trick you, he's going to take everything from you, don't do not do what he says. Um, so then Bali Maharaj immediately rejected him that, you know, this is what you're meant to be teaching me to do, and you're telling me not to, you know, the Lord himself has come before me, um, asking for me to, 
asking me for something. So of course I must give, you know, um, I have an opportunity to give everything to the Lord, to surrender to the Lord. And you're telling me not to do this, so therefore you are not um, fit to be, uh, to be a spiritual master. You're unworthy to be a spiritual master, so therefore he rejected him. Um, and now we all and now we all glorify so many, many, many count, countless years later, we glorify in Bali Maharaj for this, um, for his surrender to the Lord. But obviously this is a rare occasion, um, sorry, a rare circumstances, extreme circumstances, but generally um, we never reject the spiritual master once we accepted the spiritual master. Um, because as we said, you know, like it says here, help, they help their disciples um, and they understand the essence of all the Shastras. Um, and yeah, because Ashwatthama did, he failed in these duties, so therefore he was rejected um, as a Brahmana. Okay, so, so this is, Prabhupada is saying that this is the Shastric understanding, and then he says, but to a good lady like Draupadi, the matter was considered not from the angle of Shastric, Shastric vision, but as a matter of custom. By custom, Ashwatthama was offered the same respect as offered to his father. It was so because, generally, the people accept the son of a Brahmana as a real Brahmana by sentiment only. Factually, the matter is different. A Brahmana is accepted on the merit of qualification and not on the merit of simply being the son of a Brahmana. So this is something um, we've discussed already before in this chapter, um, probably many times that, not even in this chapter, but it's a common um, teaching that um, being a Brahmana or being any, any of these positions, um, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, um, is all based on qualities. It is nothing to do with uh, birth, nothing to do, be, to do with being, for example, in this case, the son of a Brahmana, the son of Dronacharya, is nothing to do with that. Um, it's to do with qualification. So Prabhupada is saying that um, Arjun and Krishna are looking at it from uh, the point of view of Shastra, whereas Draupadi is simply... Um, looking at, it is, uh, as it says here, from the point of custom, um, simply because he was uh, born as the son of a Brahmana. He's in, the, he's in an elevated family. He's the son of a Brahmana. So that's just kind of the custom. So Prabhupada is saying that is why Prabhupada is doing this. But as we said, um, also it's her great compassion. Um, and then Prabhupada says also that, but in spite of all of this, Draupadi desired that Ashwatthama be at once released, and it was all the same, a good sentiment for her. This means that a devotee of the Lord can tolerate all sorts of tribulation personally, but still, such devotees are never unkind to others, even to the enemy. These are the characteristics of one who is a pure devotee of the Lord. So, um, so first of all, I just want to discuss, you know, this point about uh, it based being based on qualities, not birth, and and also like the, you mentioned in the last sentence about this being the characteristics of a pure devotee of the Lord. So I just want to discuss that first, and then another interesting point which I want to discuss after that is um, this point that about devotee can tolerate everything personally, but then. Uh, they're never unkind to others, even to the enemy. So, but anyway, first, um, because previously, I don't know if it was the last class I gave here, or maybe any one of them recently, uh, in, in this chapter, um, I had a verse which I think it, it mentioned about the 12 qualities of a Brahmana and how it's not... Um, you know, someone may someone may have the twelve qualities of a brahmana, um, but if they're not a devotee, uh, then they're lower than someone who doesn't have 
play with these qualities, is born in a dog eater family, um, but they're a devotee. So that person, the second, the latter person is, is higher because they're a devotee, regardless of the other parts, the other aspect of it. Um, <clears throat> and, but at that time, I think on the, in the purport, um, it didn't mention the 12 qualities, but I found that um, in my reading, I found the 12 qualities now. So I just wanna um, look at that. But first of all, um, if we if we go to, so I just want to look at uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, chapter 20, and, uh, and basically um, this chapter is, well, just to give some, some context and background, this chapter is where Sanatan Goswami um, has finally managed to uh, escape from prison and uh, meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he's he's come to Varanasi um, and he's come to finally uh, meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, be in the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of, uh, Mahaprabhu starts to give his instructions to Sanatana Goswami. Um, so this is from that chapter uh, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking to him. <clears throat> so this is uh, chapter 20, text 58. Name bhakta shchatur vedi bad bhakta shwapacha priyaha tasmai deyam tato grayam sacha pujo yatahyaham. So this is kind of just um, to remind us of. Um, that verse that I was talking about. Um, so the translation is that Lord Krishna said, even though a person is a very learned scholar of the Sanskrit Vedic literatures, he is not accepted as my devotee unless he is pure in devotional service. However, even though a person is born in a family of dog eaters, he is very dear to me. If he is a pure devotee who has no motive to enjoy fruitive activity or mental speculation. Indeed, all respect should be given to him, and whatever he offers should be accepted. Such devotees are as worshipable as I am. Um, we can see in the purport that, um, you know, as I mentioned, Sanatana Goswami is being instructed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and then later Sanatana Goswami includes this particular verse in uh, the Hari Bhakti Vilas, as it says here in the purport. So I just wanted to mention because um, as we read in the purple for today's verse that about the characteristics of a pure devotee of the Lord, so I wanted to link it to this, um, that, you know, this pure devotee of the Lord, they have no motive to enjoy fruit of activity or mental speculation, um, you know, pure in devotion of service, um, and here is the point that I said, you know, even if they're born in a family of dog eaters, if they're a pure devotee. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, very powerful that the Lord says actually that such devotees are as worshipable as I am. So he's making it very clear that we should offer the same, same level of respect to, to the Lord's devotees. We worship the Lord's devotees. So so then afterwards, so here we'll, we'll, we'll soon see the 12 qualities. So this is the next verse. Um, and then Prabhupada, Prabhupada lists the 12 qualities in the purple. So I'll just, I'll just read the, the verse first. Vipradvishad guna yutadara vinda nabha padara vinda vimukhatshvapacham varishtam this um, first of all, the verse itself is very similar to the previous verse. It says that one may be born in a Brahmana family and have all 12 Brahminical qualities, but if he is not devoted to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, 
who has a navel shaped like a lotus. He is not as good as a chandala, who has dedicated his mind, words, activities, wealth, and life to the service of the Lord. Simply to take birth in a Brahmana family or to have Brahminical qualities is not sufficient. One must become a pure devotee of the Lord. If a Shwapacha or Chandala is a devotee, he delivers not only himself but his whole family, whereas a Brahmana who is not a devotee but simply has Brahminical qualifications cannot even purify himself what to speak of his family. So we got the, the words here, you know, Chandala, Shwapacha, um, a similar thing uh, means, you know, the dog eater. Prabhupada says this is this is actually quoted from Prahlad Maharaj in Srimad Bhagavatam 7, 9, 10. So now Prabhupada lists the 12 qualities according to the Mahabharat, um, 12 qualities of Brahmana. Dharmascha satyam chadamasta pascha amatsaryam hristitikshanasuya Yagyashchadanam chadriti shrutam chavratani vaidvadasha brahmanasya. A Brahmana must per sorry, a Brahmana must be perfectly religious, the Dharmash. He must be truthful, satya. He must be able to control his senses. Dhammas. He must execute severe austerities, tapa. He must be detached, humble, and tolerant. He must not envy anyone. And he must be expert in performing sacrifices, giving whatever he has in charity. He must be fixed in devotional service and expert in the knowledge of the Vedas. These are the 12 qualifications of a Brahmana. Okay, so, <clears throat> and then Prabhupada does also mention, you know, 1842, uh, verse 1842 in Bhagavad Gita also. Uh, not 12 qualities, but it also describes um, the qualities of Brahmana, and then even in this other scripture, which I've, I've not heard of before, um, it also mentions 12 qualities, which may be slightly different. Um, but yeah, so now, so here is the actual 12 qualities that uh, we may have heard this before, but um, we may not have seen the actual list of those 12 qualities. Um, I mean, looking at this particular list, obviously there's a bit of a, you could say, a contradiction in the sense that we were talking, you know, like we were saying, <clears throat> you know, they could have all 12 quali Brahminical qualities, but they may not be devoted to the Lord. But then here it says one of the 12 qualities is to be fixed in devotional service. So I was reading that and thinking, isn't that a contradiction? So I guess um, but it's not mentioned. It's not mentioned in the other lists, you know. Um, so I, w I was thinking this probably this is um, the first list is you know it's including being fixed in devotional service. So this is um, I'm assuming this is what Brahmana should be. Um, that you know. In addition to all these other things, you know, one of these things that one of these qualities that they possess is to be fixed in devotional service. Um, so then, if if that is one, if if they have that quality, then they're actually, you know, a real Brahmana. That is what a Brahmana is meant to be. Um, whereas we can see these other these other lists are a bit more general. They don't mention anything about devotional service. Um, so maybe we could read these and say that you know, um, you know, say a, you know, Brahmana might, ha might have these twelve qualities, but it's not mentioned about uh, being fixed in devotional service in this particular list. Um, but anyway, so you know, we're talking about. So say if we look at this list, we're talking about Ashwatthama. So we can see, you know, that he's not been perfect religious. Um, Truthful, you know, he's not able to control his senses. He's not able to control his him, himself, like you know, like we were hearing that he releases the Brahmastra, but he even though he doesn't know how to to uh, retract it afterwards, you know, just 
unable to, no self-control, he just released it. Um, you know, one of the, the urges, you know, um, the urges of the senses, the urges of the mind, you know, we hear of these different urges in nectar instruction. Um, so it's, it's clear that Ashwatthama didn't have control of these things. And, you know, it says um, in the nectar instruction that only someone who has control over those things, they can, um, you know, it says some, to paraphrase, you know, they can make disciples all over the world, you know, they can, basically, they can be a spiritual teacher, they can be a, a spiritual master, because they have control over these things. Um, but Ashwatthama didn't have control of, of, of them, so, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't fit to be a spiritual teacher, even though, you know, Draupadi is saying that he, we should still consider him like a spiritual teacher, and we should treat him accordingly. Um, you can see, you know, I mean, basically, you know, Ashwatthama, he doesn't have these qualities. Um, for example, um, yeah, and he's very envious. Um, he was not expert because, you know, for example, as we just mentioned, um, he knew how to release the Brahmastra, and, but not to retract it. So, you know, we can see his, his knowledge is, is not very, um, what's the word, not very comprehensive. Um, giving whatever he has in charity, we can see he's not a very giving person. Um, again, he's not an expert and uh, in the knowledge of the Vedas. And ultimately, yes, he's, he's not fixed at all in devotional service. So we can see that Ashwatthama um, fits this perfectly, that um, you know, he doesn't, I, I mean, he doesn't even possess the, you know, we're talking about someone who may have the 12 qualities, but they don't have devotion to Lord Krishna. But Ashwatthama is not even on that level. He doesn't even have the 12 qualities or, you know, he's not a devotee either. So he's in a very, very uh, lowly position. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> if we go back to today's purple, um, so I, I just wanted to, I was talking about those those verses from the CEC uh, in relation to the last sentence about the characteristics of one who is a pure devotee of the Lord. Um, and also in relation um, to the last sentence of the previous paragraph, where it talks about a Brahmana being accepted on the merit of qualification and not uh, birth. And again, on this point of, of how a Brahmana should be. Um, so we've heard this story many, many times. I think I've, I've also told this story uh, at least once uh, in Chad, Chad classes, um, but it's relevant and I love the story. So, uh, you know, the, the illiterate Brahmana, um, the pastime of the illiterate Brahmana in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I just wanted to mention this again, um, but this time, um, to tell the story in uh, with Srila Prabhupada's words, he he actually in several lectures he he tells this story, and every time you know he tells a story, it's slightly different and it's but it's it's very nectarian uh, every time, and it really shows us um, what is the actual importance. Is it to be a a really expert brahmana to be um, very knowledgeable to be um, yeah, expert in all the shastras, all the Vedas, or is it devotion? You know, this is the perfect uh, pastime to make that point. So, therefore, I'd like to, <clears throat> I'd like to just read it out. Um, just a few, few short paragraphs. Anyway, this is from Sri Prabhupada's lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam, two three twenty three, given in Los Angeles on the twentieth of June, nineteen seventy two. So, Sri Prabhupada says, Bhagavad Gita is understood by devotee. He may be illiterate, it doesn't matter. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu certified the illiterate Brahmana who is reading Bhagavad Gita in Ranganath temple, 
You know the story. The Brahmana was illiterate. His guru ordered him that you read Bhagavad Gita daily, 18 chapters. So he could not refuse the order of Guru Maharaj. So he was taking the book and simply seeing. So those who knew that he was literate, they were criticizing. Well, Brahmana, how are you reading Bhagavad Gita? He could not answer because he knew that I am illiterate. I do not know. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw this and approached him. Well, Brahmana, what you are reading? So he could understand that this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has not come to criticize him. He is serious. So he informed him, Sir, I am reading Bhagavad Gita, but I am illiterate. I am illiterate, but my spiritual master has ordered to read. So what can I do? I have taken this book and moving these pages, that's all. What can I do? Actually, I cannot read. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inquired, but I see you are sometimes crying. Yes, sir, I sometimes cry. Why? Now, because as soon as I take this book in my hand and I see the picture that Lord Krishna is driving the chariot of Arjuna, I cry. Oh, Krishna is so kind that he has taken the service of his devotee. He should have been seated on the chariot. Arjuna should have driven the chariot, but he is driving the chariot and Arjuna is sitting on the seat. So Krishna is so kind and beloved that he can serve his devotee. It is the duty of the devotee to serve him, but he is so kind and affectionate that he serves his devotee. So as soon as I think of this, Krishna's magnanimity, I cry. And immediately Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced him that you are, you, your reading of Bhagavad Gita is perfect because you have understood the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. So, um, yeah, very amazing pastime. It's uh, every time, every time I hear it, it's just amazing. So here, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is making clear, making it clear um, that devotion is what counts. You know, this Brahmana, he can't even read the words. He sim he says, uh, as Prabhupada mentions um, when he's describing it here, he says, um, I've taken this book and I'm moving the pages. That's all. What can I do? He's simply got holding the book and just moving the pages, but he can't read anything. But simply, he's still absorbed in, in this pastime um, where he's seeing, he's envisioning uh, uh, Krishna driving the chariot of Arjuna. And he's saying here that, you know, Krishna is the Lord. He's the one who should be sitting on the chariot. Arjuna is the one who should be Krishna's driver. You know, the devotee should be serving uh, the Lord. But... Here, Krishna is so kind um, that he is doing, he is serving uh, the devotee. And it's all due to the pure love, the pure devotion uh, of his devotee. Otherwise, you know, he's not going to do this for everyone. But when there is that pure loving relationship between Krishna and the devotee, then there is nothing that Krishna wouldn't do for the devotee. So we can see this, this is a real Brahmana. This is a true Brahmana who has uh, pure devotion, as we, we read in that list from the Mahabharat of the 12 qualities. In that particular list, it mentioned being fixed in devotional service. So this, this, um, this Brahmana was being, was being fixed in his devotional service. And because... Um, you know, reading, hearing, reading is reading is included in Shravanam hearing. Uh, it's part, it is devotional service. Just, um, you know, just, even, even when we're hearing a class, that's devotional service. If we're doing it in the right consciousness, it's, it's uh, Shravanam. So even though you could say, oh, but he's not actually reading, but then, okay, if he's not doing Shravanam, but he's doing Smaranam, 
you know, he's simply absorbed in remembrance of Krishna. So again, that's devotional service. So he is fixed in, in that service. And also, to add to that, because we are talking about, uh, um, you know, of being a, a spiritual master and how, um, what makes a spiritual master worthy of being followed and, and conversely, what, what makes a spiritual master liable to be rejected, as Prabhupada mentioned here. Um, and, you know, so the Brahmana is, is following a particular guru like that, you know, a bona fide spiritual master. And this is another reason why he is such an uh, advanced devotee, that he's simply fixed in following the orders of his spiritual master. Even though he can't even read, still, he never gives up that my spiritual master has told me to do it, so I have to do it. Um, so he's fixed in that way. Even if I can't read it, I have to. I have to just try. Um, even if, even though these other brahmanas are criticizing, making fun of me, laughing at me, still, I know I will continue in my service to my spiritual master in following my spiritual master's instructions. Um, so we can see here, you know, there's a bona fide um, spiritual master and a bona fide disciple. Then that that's the proper. Uh, relationship, you know, Ashwatthama, he's not a he's not a bona fide spiritual teacher, spiritual master. Um, <clears throat> but then another example, obviously, Bhagavatam. So it's uh, Shukadev Goswami and Pariksha Maharaj are the the ideal um, or perfect perfect listener and perfect speaker. So therefore, it is said that. Um, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami is the perfect representation of Girtanam, and Pariksha Maharaj is the perfect representation of Shravanam. And when the perfect listener and the perfect speaker come together, um, then everyone is benefited. They're both benefited. Uh, they both, you know, go further and they advance in their devotional service. They become more fixed. But also everyone else who's hearing, um, everyone else who's hearing as well, um, they also get benefited. And whoever is comes into contact with these um, with these pure devotees, they become benefited. Um, so yeah, so that's oh yeah. So then after that point, I wanted to speak a little bit more, just. Um, just last point, really, and then we can we can go on to any questions. That let's just read this sentence again, second last. That a devotee of the Lord can tolerate all sorts of tribulation personally, but still such devotees are never unkind to others, even to the enemy. So, just to end here, I wanted to give another example um, from. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes, obviously, of uh, Haridas Thakur. Um, a very good example of this. As we know, um, well, I'm, I'm assuming many of us uh, may know already, the, the story, the pastime where um, Haridas Thakur is being caned in Maybe someone can correct me afterwards if I'm wrong. I, I don't know it's 22 marketplaces or 20, 23. Anyway, I think it's 22 marketplaces. Uh, yeah, if someone could correct me, um, that's that, that would be good. But anyway, so ma in many marketplaces, he was he was being uh, beaten. He was being whipped um, because the you know the Muslim rulers were telling him. Um, to reject, to, you know, he's just constantly chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He's just constantly chanting uh, the holy name, and he's being told <coughs> to stop. Um, he's been told to, you know, you should stop this, you should reject this, and he completely just refuses. So he's punished in this this terrible, uh, brutal way. Um, 
And still, um, we hear the incredible, incredible compassion, incredible glory of Haridas Thakur. He's being, he's undergoing such incredible physical suffering, such, as I mentioned here, such tribulation personally. Even then, he's, you know, to these soldiers uh, who are doing it to him, um, who are beating him to these gods, um, he wasn't feeling any um, negative feelings towards any ill will towards them. No, he wasn't feeling unkind. He wasn't even considering them an enemy. Um, and then as we, we find out after um, that, you know, when, um, when this is going on, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, obviously he's the spiritual, uh, sorry, he's the Supreme Lord. He's a Supreme Personality God. So obviously he knows what is happening. So he knows, you know, this is happening to Haridas Thakur, my, my own devotee, my dear beloved devotee is being um, harassed and beaten. So what did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, just like when he found out what Jagai Madai had done to Nityananda Prabhu, you know, he became absorbed in transcendental anger, you know, the Sudarshan Chakra manifested and he, he, he rushed on the scene to kill Jagai and Madai. But what, what happened, as we all know, because of Nityananda Prabhu's uh, asking mercy for them, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't kill them. So the same thing happened here, or very similar. As soon as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, realized this is happening to Haridas Thakur, he again became angry and he was going to come there and kill them, stop them from doing this to Haridas Thakur. But then later, um, he could, basically he couldn't do this. And later he explained to Haridas Thakur why um, that I wanted to come and kill them. I wanted to stop them, but I couldn't because you, you know, Haridas Thakur was praying for them. Just imagine these, these, these men are, you know, are beating you. Imagine if this is happening to yourself. These men are beating you. And in your mind, you are praying to the Lord, my dear Lord, please spare them. Please do not punish them. Um, you know, it reminds us of also the example of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that, you know, when he's praying to the Lord, that please uh, forgive them, you know, for they know not what they do. Um, so similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu couldn't, couldn't come and stop them because uh, Haridas Thakur was praying that don't, you know, don't kill them, don't, don't take any um, um, action against them for this. Please just give them your mercy. Please forgive them. Um, and therefore, because the, the Lord's devotee is asking, so he has to, he can't go against it. He has to accept it. He has to accept the word of his devotee. So therefore, he couldn't go against um, Haridas Thakur's prayers. So therefore, um, those men who were beating Haridas Thakur were spared. So this is the, <clears throat> we're talking about the incredible compassion of Draupadi. Another, this is another incredible example of such compassion. That really, only a devotee um, can possibly so show show such compassion a non-devotee a materialistic person can never so show this level of compassion you know this they show some devotion you know in giving to charity helping with charity helping with these charitable causes um but there's a limit to it but here um we see you know, there doesn't seem to be any limit to the compassion of these pure devotees um that anyone whoever it might be um, because they love Krishna. So if, if we love Krishna, then we can love everyone. Otherwise, if we don't love Krishna, it's very hard to love so many people. But if we love Krishna, because he's in the center and everyone else is connected to him, if we love Krishna, then we can love um, everybody, just like Krishna is, the, is compared to the root of a tree. Um, so Krishna is the root, and every, the rest of the tree, everyone else is connected to him in that way. Or we think of it as like a wheel. And we have the, the central part of the wheel is called the hub. So Krishna is the hub. And then we have the, the, the lines coming out, the spokes 
of the wheel. Uh, those are the other living entities. So if we are connected to Krishna, if we love Krishna, then we love everyone else because they're all connected to Krishna, they're all part and parcel of Krishna. So in this way, because these pure devotees, they love Krishna, therefore they have this genuine love. It's not artificial. This is not something we can imitate. Because they have that pure love for Krishna, then they also have love for all of Krishna's children, all of Krishna's parts and parcels. So therefore, they can show this such uh, unmatched uh, level of compassion. I'll just stop there. Um, yeah, so I, I wasn't so uh, super prepared this time. Uh, that's why I didn't have a PowerPoint message. No, sorry, PowerPoint presentation, anything like that. Um, but yeah, I hope it uh, hope it made some sense. Hope we got something out of it. And yeah, if anyone has any questions or corrections, um, or if also if anyone can just confirm how many marketplaces this happened this past time with Hari Das Thakur, that would be good as as well. But yeah, if anyone has anything to say, please go ahead, Hari Krishna. I think Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I think it was 22. 22. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'll, that's what I heard, I think. Yeah, it's 22. Probably. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, anything else from anyone? <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna um, Prabhuji. Oh, Hare Krishna. Yes. Yes, indeed, um, thank you for your nice class, as always, um, very nicely explained. Yeah, when, I when you were talking about these uh, compassionate people, I was thinking about um, uh, the demon Vitrasura, who was the great devotee of the Lord, and mm. due to a curse, he became a demon. But when, when Indra was uh, killing him, and uh, Indra was allowing him to retaliate, but he said no, he was praying to the Lord in his heart, forgive Indra, and he was at the same time, like provoking Indra to kill him. Yeah, this is kind of yeah. passion also, right? Yeah. So I was I was thinking of that past time also. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah. Really yeah, nice thank job. you. Thank you so much, Matthew. Yeah, that's, thank I you like for Krishna. reminding me um, of that. Yeah, it's a very, very beautiful pastime. One of one of the most amazing pastimes in the Bhagavatam. Um, mm -hmm. that he's in that demon body, but still he's such an incredible devotee. And as you said, um, such compassion there, such tolerance, even though he's being put into that situation by Indra. Um, and yeah, if if um, if anyone hasn't seen or read uh, Ritrasura's prayers uh, to the Lord in the Bhagavatam, please have a look there. Uh, you know, absolutely amazing, very beautiful prayers there. Um, yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Um, otherwise, we will we will stop here. Okay, so um, thank you everyone for coming to another Chad class and um, I'd like to offer my humble obeisances. Vancha kalpa turubhya Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.